Hello, Myra. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I would really love to talk with you about your knowledge in the meeting of Ayurveda and clinical sexology. Okay. Because <laughs> you, yes, as, a, as a practitioner, <laughs> Uh, you, you have a lot of knowledge around the area and I think it's really important to have the conversation and, and share with people that Ayurveda is a wonderful way to help support people with a lot of potential difficulties that they're having. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, so let's begin. Can you please uh, explain to everybody that's watching what is Ayurveda and where did it come from? Okay, well, uh, Ayurveda is a, is a Vedic science. It came from the Vedas and it's over 5,000 years old. Uh, and the word Ayurveda, generally we translate it as meaning the science of living or the science of life. And so with that, uh, it's, it's tools uh, for maintaining uh, good living, but it's also, uh, it's also a complete science. You know, there's, there's surgery, there's all aspects that are addressed in terms of being a human being and, and living this life. And, and, and so it addresses those things in, um, in a holistic manner, uh, in a manner which is in alignment with nature. So uh, following the principles of nature. Uh, and then we apply them to to the situation, to where we are now, to who we are today, and who an individual is. Mm. Mm. So if somebody is coming to see you for an Ayurvedic consultation and they get treatment, what would that actually look like? Can you mm -hmm. share that information, please? Sure. Uh, there's there there are a variety of things and and usually done in stages uh, depends on the condition of the person in the beginning so first we assess the the condition and then we take a look at you know what are causing any difficulties and we attempt to have uh, those things removed it's called uh, nidana parivarjana it means to remove the cause and and so we look then at how the person is living their life uh, what their what their diet looks like, in other words, what they're consuming through the mouth, but also through all five senses. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so, so those are the things that we try to address first. And those things actually many times will take care of of difficulties that people have uh, when there's disorder and disease that's deeper in the system. Then we use uh, we use herbs. Uh, we use various body type treatments that are both for the body and the mind. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we have there's degrees of those. Some of them are very simple. Some very simple home remedies. Many home remedies. Home remedies. But then sometimes there are treatments that are done um, in a in a facility or a location where that is doing treatments and that. And there are actually. In, in India still, there are uh, surgeries and things that are done in really magnificent ways uh, mm -hmm. that uh, are not so common in other places, but, uh, but that just gives you an idea of the extent of it uh, because it really takes a look at the whole picture of living. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite a comprehensive process of looking at the big picture of what's going on for the individual and how they're connecting with more than themselves That's uh, right. and looking at their systems of what's going on and making sure that there's a lot of balance yeah. within right. and out. And you're yeah. making, you're bringing that to another piece that I haven't mentioned yet, mm. which is it's not just the body and the mind, but we look at the body and the mind and whatever someone considers to be their spiritual connection. You know, how do they connect to their innermost self? And how that is or is not happening is, is a big, big factor in mm. uh, disorders and disease and that. So, uh, so we look at that as well. So, and, and, uh, and recognizing that there are many, many ways that a person can experience that 
and and or express that as well. Mm, thank you. Um, honing in a little more to uh, different presentations that people can have, and I'm thinking specifically about um, a book called the DSM-5, which mm -hmm. has a list of different dysfunctions, and I don't like using the word dysfunction. I think it's a bit harsh. Uh, I prefer to use the word problem um, mm -hmm. and helping people to overcome various uh, problems or difficulties that they may have. So I will just read through uh, what the different um, dysfunctions are for male and female bodied people. Um, and I'd be interested to hear uh, what Ayurveda can bring to helping maybe some or, or maybe uh, all of these uh, different dysfunctions. Yeah. So I'll just read them out. Okay. Okay, okay so we have um, male hypoactive sexual desire disorder, mm -hmm. female sexual interest arousal disorder, mm -hmm. erectile disorder, mm -hmm. premature ejaculation, and that can be early or rapid, Mm -hmm. female orgasmic disorder, mm -hmm. delayed ejaculation, genital pelvic pain, mm -hmm. penetration disorder, mm -hmm. and vulvodynia. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so there's, there's a few so, things there. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good list. Um, mm. Think about the best way to talk about them. I, I've seen all those and I've seen all those resolve with Ayurveda. So I, those, that, that's, that list I can, I can speak to. Uh, so the first one, if you name them, then I'll, uh, again, then I'll. Sure. Speak. Thank you. The first one is male hypoactive sexual desire disorder. And uh, then there's the female equivalent of that, right? Is the next one. Correct. That's right. Yes. Okay. All right. So when, hmm, where do I start? You know, when you're talking about a whole something that's holistic, it's like this. It's yeah. like a circle and where are you or a sphere and where are you going to start? <laughs> so the starting point is that we all have all five elements in us that mm. are earth, water. Think about your body, as I say. The um, I, hang on, Myra, sorry, I think I just... Uh, lost you for a moment perhaps okay. uh, i heard you last say thinking about your body as you mentioned these so please okay. go ahead okay so as i mentioned uh these five elements i want you to think about your own body so the the earth element that's going to be your your bones the physical mass that we have and the other element we're mostly fluid and water, we can say. And the the third is fire, and that is the fire of transformation. And uh, we have a, a digestive fire that helps us digest food and life. And then air, we breathe. We know we need to breathe, right? We breathe, we breathe in, we breathe out, and that respiration then provides nourishment to the rest of the body and to the mind. And then there's something called the ethers or the akash. This is space. So there has to be some space as well, but not too much, right? So for example, when a woman becomes pregnant, then the baby starts to grow and the body is able to make the space for that. And when the baby is birthed, then that space is there. And that space has to be taken care of properly. I just thought I'd mention that. And because it is a factor actually so often for women in one of the, or the uh, disorders that you mentioned. Mm. Okay, mm. So that's just a little bit of background. Those five elements then, we describe them, by, um, we organize them and describe how they function in something called the doshas. So this is just mm. a name. And it's an interesting name because the dosha, the word dosha means that which is messed up. <laughs> and so we really only need to talk about it because it goes out of balance and we need to bring it back to our individual balance that, so that 
our each of our constitutions is created at the time of our conception. Uh, yeah. And so that all gets set up for this lifetime at that point. So we have these doshas, which are air and ethers that I mentioned is vata, and the, that fire of transformation and some water element, that's pitta. And then kapha is the water and earth elements, the heavier stuff you could think of. Yeah? And you could think of that, you know, going from earth to the fire, it's lighter. And then from fire to the air, that's lighter again. So all of this goes together to make us up. And some of us have more of one than another, and that's what makes us unique. But at the moment of conception, there is a, um, uh, a unique amount of each of those that is for each of us. And I say this because this is our starting point. And then everything in life, it starts happening. In utero, we get birthed life happens. And when those, but when those doshas or those elements go into excess or deficiency, when we have too much of one of them, then we have symptoms, right? So that's, that gives you a little bit of background. So the, the first, uh, the first disorder that you mentioned there, um, yeah, male hypoactive sexual desire disorder. <laughs> okay. And when yeah. you're saying hypoactive, you mean mm -hmm. lower. Is that correct? I want to make sure I'm. That's I'm correct. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So somebody who isn't feeling that they are, that they're having the desire for exactly. yeah, yeah intimacy, sexual intimacy. Yeah. Okay. So there's two, two primary things that affect that. Uh, number one is when that air and ethers part of us gets too high. It goes, it gets high to a point and we lose interest. And part of that is because when, if you think about yourself, if there's too much, if I'm too airy, there's two ways that's primarily that that's going to happen. One is I'm going to get real spacey, right? Scattered mm -hmm. feeling. And when that happens, I'm not very well connected to my body, particularly mm -hmm. to my lower body. Yeah. So this is one of the main things that will contribute and cause that kind of a feeling in men or women. And then, then there's another piece that goes with this one, which is our agni, which is our digestive fire. Yeah. Uh, it's our capacity to transform what we consume. So if you think about intimacy, there is, there's a certain degree of consumption there. You know, we have to have we have to allow our, you know, our energy to open up to another person in this case, yeah? And, mm. uh, and so when that fire is really low, we're not going to open up. It's, our, our enthusiasm goes down. Mm, enthusiasm for life. And if you think yeah. about, at least how I think about uh, 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 being interested in sex and being interested in intimacy, it means... I have a willingness to open up. Mm. So another way that this happens is when the vata gets too high and the kapha, the earth element in, in us, gets too low. Uh, earth and water. So an example mm. of that would be someone who gets emaciated or anorexic. Well, or, we, mm. or it can be just on, that, on the way there. Uh, when someone gets very thin, Right, so the kapha is the part of us that's juicy and loving. Yes. And so if there's not enough of that, you get we become sharp. You know, we get kind of sharp and I don't know another word sharp. Not very not you know not warm and loving. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and and so so those are the kinds of things in the situation that creates that. Those are very correctable kinds of uh, problems. Uh, mm. So the way we treat then is when there are symptoms that have certain qualities, we bring in the opposite qualities to create balance. And then, then this is where our, our body and, and even our mind if it's not, you know, the mind can get way off over here, right? 
and it was a lot of bad habits and a lot of uh, impressions or memories, right? We call them samskara from the past. Mm -hmm. But we can we can bring it back. But that the but the body itself naturally wants to come back to a state of balance. All we have to do is get out of the way. We have mm -hmm. to just stop doing the things that are causing the imbalance that mm -hmm. bring us those mm -hmm. kinds of symptoms. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, as you're explaining all of this, I am relating it to perhaps um, knowledge that maybe for people who aren't so well versed in Ayurvedic practices, sort of relating words with words. So, uh, and how Ayurveda may be able to treat a few different things by bringing things into balance. For example, you're talking about the increase of the Agni, and I'm thinking about your zest for life. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so if someone is, is presenting perhaps with uh, some depression, so in feeling sluggish, so um, treating these is also right. going to be helping with that too. So, and in an assessment for for um, male hypoactive sexual desire disorder and for female sexual interest arousal disorder, we would be looking at these things as as well. Exactly. Yeah. So it's a nice nice blending. It is. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so the next one on the list here is, I'll, I'll read the next two. We have um, erectile disorder mm -hmm. and we have premature ejaculation, uh, early or rapid. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Technical thing. Uh, okay, erectile, yeah. Okay, so, so now we have most cases, two doshas involved. So there's some, mm -hmm. there's, there could be enough, there's enough Agni there, right? But, but, but when Vata gets high and the Pitta gets high, then there's interest and that, and there's, there's some desire, but the, there's, mm, how do I put it? Typically, typically, the pitta is going to be high first. And there's a tendency towards some overactivity, one you might say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then what happens though is as long as pitta stays high, if you think about a fire, if you have it around and there's a lot of it, then it's eventually going to dry things up around you. And that's yeah. one of the things that happens is that it starts to aggravate the vata. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then that ability, the vata disorder again, is what um, reg what regulates that ability to to have an erection at, at the time that you want to. In other words, where that's all connected, right? So, mm -hmm. has a desire, and when vata gets very high, the mind starts to just get a little bit off, meaning it mm -hmm. just it's not connecting as well as it could yeah and so mm -hmm. then that's where that's where that kind of disorder comes up yeah mm -hmm. yeah uh, and, yeah the sorry go ahead oh i was just going to say that you know we we find that it's most often it's what somebody's eating and drinking those are the things mm -hmm. that are very large factors there certainly memories and things from the past are as well but mm -hmm. uh, this is so interesting because what you're saying is it, we, as as uh, sexologists, absolutely look at these factors Great. in in assessment and treatment as well. So that's again, it's a, it's another match. So uh -huh. wonderful. <laughs> it's very good. Oh, yeah, it's, it's very exciting for me. <laughs> um, okay, uh, and um, uh, we have next on the list uh, female orgasmic disorder. What would you like uh, to share with that? Yeah. So uh, again, if you were, I just want to be sure I'm in line with how you're thinking of it, which is yeah. that um, that abil inability to actually have an orgasm or or yes, yes, exactly. Delayed. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and really, it's the same kind of thing. It's usually mm -hmm. 
it's going to be because there's some excess vata. Sometimes mm -hmm. there's excess pitta involved also. Again, it's sort of the, everything affects everything else. And so you look, we would look for this, the starting point. You know, I, I always think of it when we have a disorder of some sort, somebody started a party in the wrong place. In other words, there was excess happening in most cases. And, uh, and so we look to see, you know, how did that get started? Uh, there, as I mentioned, there's also samskara, the memories from the past mm -hmm. that can get away. Uh, there can also be uh, a, a situation where when the system becomes very polluted uh, with junk food, uh, yeah. with alcohol consumption, with things of that nature, uh, mm -hmm. there, there's, we look at qualities also in nature. Yeah, I mentioned that. So we look at these 10 pairs of opposite qualities and we, and uh, so things like light and heavy and, and mm -hmm. uh, hot and cold and things like that. But we also look at something called the mahagunas, which are mm, present in all of us. And, and they're called tamas, rajas, and sattva. And so mm -hmm. uh, sattva is that natural balance and harmony yeah, it's in us. It's when things are humming, you know, things are going very well and uh, uh, there's no symptoms, there's, you know, and, and, and mm -hmm. I can really see the sweetness in life. And then rajas is activity that leads to disturbance. You can have activity of the right kind that's taking you towards sattva, as long as it's of the right kind of activity in the right amount, mm -hmm. right? So you, but you could have the right kind of activity and have the wrong amount, meaning too much of it in most cases. Yeah. And it's not going to take you to sattva, no matter what. It's going to take you mm -hmm. to tamas. And tamas is, again, there's there's good and bad. There's good and not so good in each of these. But, but tamas is our sleep. It's when we go to sleep, we become, you know, we become inert, and uh, but it's also heaviness and negativity, and uh, lethargy, and dullness. Mm. So if you eat a lot of junk food, junk food is, you know, and I say that, I mean, heavily processed, full of chemicals, things yes. of that nature. Those are the things then that are going to, those are tamasic. If you eat tamasic mm. food, you're going to be more tamasic in your life. Mm. If you sleep excessively, this can also do it, but but most of the time it's from you know watching, watching or reading negative things and that. So we become heavy, negative, and inert, mm -hmm. and and uh, and so that can also too much tamas in the diet in the living. This can also create that kind of disorder, where the, it, it's just not going to happen. It's basically a person usually feels like they just I don't have the energy for it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. As you're you're saying this, Mara, I'm thinking about the encouragement for individuals to think about what's going on in their bodies and take a moment to feel what's going on. How do you feel after you've maybe had a sneaky sleep in the middle of the day? How do you mm -hmm. feel if you've um, had um, uh, some junk food? How do you feel uh, if you are up early and you watch the sunrise? How do you mm -hmm. feel if you have a walk surrounded by trees? So moving uh, towards a sattvic way of life and with food, with your practices, with everything that you do can lead to mm -hmm. um, a, a better way of being. So, yeah. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. You know, sometimes we want to take a, a problem and, and, and in our Western minds, we, try, we tend to want to put it in a box, say, this is it, mm -hmm. made it happen, now I can fix it. Uh, but, but we really do have to take a look at the, the whole picture. To, to be able to, yeah. re to resolve it in that. So uh, mm. 
and you know it it it's it's the kind of thing that if we give give the body and the mind what they need and just see it's 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 incredible and so like mm. it's or you know what you're working on is to you know is to help people see how that's so much and I, I an integral part of who we are absolutely mm. yeah. yeah indeed thank you um okay we have next on our list um delayed ejaculation okay uh and and so so this one again is is mm, it's more about vata blocking yeah, so it can be if you think about air and space it takes up mm -hmm. space and so it keeps things from moving now if we think about uh, mm, if we, in, in, some people might say you know oh it's in your mind well in, and I've heard that before anyway I, that, yeah and mm -hmm. that and, uh, and, and there is no separation between our mind and our body in terms of how they behave. Mm -hmm. But if we, can, if we can give the body the kind of support that it needs, then that makes, that makes an enormous difference on what's happening with the body. And that's, I guess, a very simple way of saying that's how vata works. You know, vata, I speak of it often because it is... Um, if you think about the doshas, if you think about a bus, uh, so you have a bus mm -hmm. and you have the physical frame and the mo and that, right? That's that's kapha, and you have an engine, and that's pitta, and then mm -hmm. you have a driver, and that's vata, right? So, <laughs> you know, vata has nothing to drive without pitta and kapha, but pitta and kapha don't go anywhere without vata, and so. Mm -hmm there's it's so frequently involved in disorders and problems of this nature yeah. and so sometimes we correct that you know sometimes it can be a matter of somebody eating a big bowl of popcorn every night there's a lot of air in it and lightness it can really cause some mm -hmm. difference uh, and then other times, like I said, it can be from emotional trauma from early in life or something like that. Mm -hmm. Not as much with the, the delayed ejaculation. That that usually has to do with there's something of a more a little bit more physical nature going on as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mara. Yeah. Um, okay, the last three are for female bodied people. We have genital pelvic pain, penetration disorder and vulvodynia. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the first two of those, the pelvic pain and the, what was the second one? I'm sorry. Pen penetration disorder, right. otherwise known as vaginismus. So, yes. So yes, yes. No, this, this, those are all also vata. You know, a very simple way of looking at it, and it doesn't mean it's the only thing involved, but if there's pain, there's vata. Yeah, mm -hmm. So we know that, that we, can, um, we can bring in some opposite qualities. And this is where, you know, finding out what the person is doing. If, they, if they're a flight attendant and they're in the air all the time, or uh, so that we bring in something like having them oil their body to start to mm -hmm. calm down. You know, and again, then we use herbs and as well as food and things of that nature. But um, this pelvic pain, though, is something I've just had somebody recently who has, um, oh gosh, I think I've been going on for about 12 years. Yeah, mm -hmm. pretty significant. Uh, just mm -hmm. on. So a little bit more explanation of that, which is each of the doshas has a home in the body where the most of it resides. Yeah. But it also resides in other places and is active elsewhere. And so that, uh, and, and Vata's home is in the, in the colon. So mm -hmm. in the, yeah. And so there's the imbalance in the amount of air and space in the body tissues, as well as in the colon, will mm -hmm. cause that kind of pain, will cause that kind of uh, uh, contraction in mm -hmm. 
in the vaginal area and that and make that all cause all those difficulties. Yeah. Mm. So there, um, there are some treatments that are done uh, manually as well to, yeah. to help that down. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, yes. So again, treatment of finding opposites to balance the dosha that is out of balance and uh, some treatment by the sounds is sometimes physical mm -hmm. and also looking at lifestyle again. So encompassing what, what the person is doing day to day and looking at their diet and, and, and such would be really big components in treating these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's one thing that I want to mention. I don't, I don't think that you had mentioned it, but it's one that I've yeah. seen a fair amount of. Uh, which is um, which, which, which is just an excess of desire, uh, mm. sexual activity. You know, this mm -hmm. is something that it can be men or women, more frequently seen in men. But but uh, and when this happens, you know, this is related to the pitta dosha, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, that, that excess though ha will cause then. Uh, you know, a depletion and also increase in the in vata dosha as well. So th at first, there's a, a tremendous intensity with it, uh, which is the if we go to the mahagunas I was talking about, which mm -hmm. is that you know I'm going after something, and that. But what we find is that then there's never enough, and it's always looking for more, looking for more until. It takes you to tamas until it starts to things, things wear out. Usually problems are created. And mm. uh, so then there ends up being that uh, tam tamasic, more heavy type mm. uh, situation. Yeah. There is one other one in erectile dif dysfunction as well, mm -hmm. uh, which is if pitta if the fire element, if there's been an excess. So we see this uh, frequently with people who have uh, chronic fatigue and that, yeah. So this is where, this is a person with a lot of pitta. They usually work, 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 work. And until they just basically run themselves dry. Sometimes it'll show up as uh, some adrenal insufficiency, thing, something like that. And usually where then the, the pitta, that excess fire and activity in them will, will just start to dry everything up eventually. And uh, so mm -hmm. we see a lot of you know, men in their 40s. Uh, women tend to come a little bit earlier. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so you know, that, that, there's another element there that takes rest. It mm -hmm. takes rest. Having the agni, the digestive fire, be strong and uh, strong enough to replenish that depletion, and that we call that ojas, which is our, it's it's our yes. vitality. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So, yeah. Um, as you're saying this, I'm reflecting upon also how um, your needs change in different times of your life Absolutely. and yeah and and to perhaps have more of an understanding uh, so having a, a clearer love and a kinder expectation for your body mm -hmm. as moving mm -hmm. for, for both for both sexes to be moving through mm -hmm. their lives is, is yeah very very important Mm. Well, I'm not sure how you how you experience this with people, but I mm, I'm a lot older than you, and I I came in came into this life at a time where you know you you got married and you had sex, but you mm. didn't have sex before getting married very much at all. I mean, you didn't. The typical people didn't. Some people did mm. it, a very small percentage. And then I also lived through the time mm. where that changed, mm. and that. And somewhere along the line, it seems like we developed a pretty distorted idea of how much that should be. Uh, you know, where 
I have people come to me and they'll say, you know, that my husband wants to have sex every day. I even had somebody that said mm -hmm. twice a day. I said, well, mm -hmm. mm, you know, that's, that, that's not sustainable. So uh, I would imagine, you know, you deal with a lot of, of people who might have some unreasonable expectations. From an Ayurveda mm -hmm. standpoint, mm, you know, that, that we're not looking at that kind of frequency, uh, you know, mm -hmm. much, much less. And also to think of it, mm, I think that a lot of people uh, that I have treated have used it as a way of, um, of uh, relieving stress. Yeah, uh, yeah, rather, well. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, because uh, people can have sex for a whole multitude of different reasons. Mm -hmm. And when I think about uh, sex or intimacy, I'm thinking, well, is it even, is it solo sex? Is it self-play? Or is it mm -hmm. sex with other people? And of course, there can be a discrepancy between um, if you're having sexual intimacy with with another person, something mm -hmm. is really owned to me only an issue if it's an issue, if there's a, mm -hmm. a difference between uh, trying to meet the needs of the partner or if, uh, as you mentioned earlier, if there's a tipping point where mm -hmm other things in your life can become out of balance um, or you're becoming unwell. Uh, so you, you mentioned earlier about the, um, the excess. Yeah. Um, so uh, the scale of what is excessive is going to be highly individual for a person. I'm thinking, depending on uh, the age of the person um, mm -hmm. and what's going on in the rest of their lives, um, if the uh, desire to be sexually intimate either with yourself or with another person is getting to a point of imbalance that it's causing difficulty in different aspects of their lives. Mm -hmm. But for other people, it wouldn't be an imbalance um, mm -hmm. comparatively right. for, yeah. So it's a yeah. very individual thing. And I really like how uh, in Ayurveda, it's looking at the big picture and the individual about mm -hmm. how they are in relation to what is going on uh, for that person in their experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I hear you. And that's, that's exactly, that's exactly how I see it and how I've experienced it mm -hmm. with people. Uh, mm, and, and, you know, what I find is that, is that if someone actually starts to actually talk about it, they'll get there themselves, uh, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it's, but it's that sort of getting that door open in the very beginning. Uh, and that really has a lot to do with what, what imbalances we see, what imbalances are there in the doshas uh, mm. and, and mm, that willingness to, to, to take a look. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And how important is it to have a dialogue about these things. Uh, mm. You mentioned earlier about uh, recently you had a client who for over a decade has been experiencing pain in, in their pelvis and yeah. I would really encourage uh, people who are watching uh, our, our discussion to please um, access support if you are experiencing any of these things because uh, many people can hold on and mm -hmm. feel such anguish and pain and the disorder can change into other difficulties in their lives when mm -hmm. something can be very, very treatable. And right. the first step is to start talking, start to mm -hmm. have the conversation uh, with people to, to access support. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and this this woman I was speaking of, she wanted to get pregnant, and she was very concerned. She hadn't gotten pregnant yet, and, mm -hmm. and very concerned about it. And and so it's pretty, it, it's pretty straightforward, but it's a process. It's a process mm -hmm. of healing. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's not, not an overnight thing necessarily. Yeah. Yeah, indeed, indeed. 
nature takes its own time to do what it needs to do. <laughs> you can't exactly. you can't fast track a sunrise. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But you know, when we get out of the way, the the body I've just seen it heal in amazing ways and sin and then and seeing how the mind can change when we when we allow those elements to come back into into that range of you know mm. what's what what's really going to work for me or for the person that individual yeah yeah um Myra, if people want to learn more about what you are doing, of course, they can have a look at your website and I'll, I'll put the details in, in the, the video. Um, but how do you work with people? Do you work with people face to face, online? Uh -huh. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I do know where that is today, at least. I am in Bali <laughs> and uh, outside of Ubud. But uh, yeah, so we do work in person. We work online mostly these days. Hopefully later this year, we'll be doing more uh, group activities uh, as well. But uh, we're Hale Pule, which is, uh, I started the company in Hawaii. So Hale Pule means house of prayer in Hawaiian. And so we, we attempt to bring everything, bring everything together for people so that they can, they can, uh, have the best experience of this living life and uh and so we do we do individual consultations and uh and then we have some programs that are online now to to help people be able to learn more about themselves learn about their agni their digestive fire and uh and and uh and various other trainings that will start to happen again in person later this year yeah mm. so yeah so it's hollypulley.com and uh, yeah, it's a, it's um, Ayurveda is really they're an amazing set of tools. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so for uh, people watching, <laughs> um, I will share. So I I met Myra uh, when I did Panchakarma at Vajagrama in mm -hmm. in India a few years ago, and uh, my experience firsthand of doing Panchakarma was. Yeah. <laughs> it was it, it was it was fabulous fabulous so um yes yeah, so i i i think very highly of the science um the tools uh, it's it's wonderful 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 stuff um i also wanted to ask you mara um are there any particular projects that you have on the horizon that you would like to share with people <laughs> well, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, you know, we're we're working. You know, we have a we we train uh, advisors and counselors in Ayurveda, mm -hmm. and that and so you know, we're we're working on a, uh, uh, a revising an existing program, and the new program is called Do Your Dharma, and it's so it's to help people with whatever profession they're in, even if they're not in Ayurveda, but to help them to understand, uh, you know, other factors they might not have thought of that go into having us mm, feel fulfilled. And uh, one of those things, for example, is looking at what's my definition of success and, mm. and looking at, you know, what do I want to create long-term and not, not just short-term thinking. And uh, so that mm. one, that be, that should be ready actually very soon, probably in another month. Yeah, no, it's and, very exciting. I look yeah. forward to seeing more information about that one. Yeah, yeah. And then we're going to do some cooking. We're get back into our cooking world again. And uh, I, yeah. I've been, I'm a little it, it, it making an adjustment to to all online from from being eighty percent to twenty percent online it has been a big adjustment. So um, yeah to that uh, to that shifting back to doing things in, in person again yeah. as well okay yeah and the, on the the note of of cooking classes of knowing how to make the best food to put into your body like how to make a ghee 
how to make a kitchery, all these things which um, uh, <laughs> should be a part of everyone's day to day uh, yeah. because the food becomes you. And so to to make sure that the building blocks that make you up is is the best that it can be so that you can be the best that you can be. This is so, so important. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, uh, last question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, is there anything in Ayurveda that you wish that people were talking about these days? But there seems to be a, a bit of a, a, a silence around something, something you would like to like people to know about. For okay. example, I wanted to talk with you so people who are having different sexual dysfunctions can learn about that Ayurveda is a, a very real way to to help people. I thought that that was important to, to share. Go ahead. Absolutely. Actually, yes. Thank you so much for the opportunity to do that because you know, there aren't that many people that are that comfortable talking about it in terms of mm -hmm. what you're doing. And I think that's, uh, you know, that's that's a fabulous thing because it's something that we'll tend to, to hide or sometimes yeah. even feel inadequate or ashamed about and that. So, uh, hmm. so the thing I think that, that I think most important that, that people maybe aren't talking about is that, is just understanding that what what is really the holistic nature of things. You know, we use the word, we throw it around, and then we mm -hmm. still keep acting in our our ways and thinking in our ways. And so, you know, my uh, my one of my goals is to is to just keep bringing it up, keep bringing it up, so we can start to. Uh, to to look at life as and ourselves as these multi-dimensional experiences, and so it's really a matter of expanding our thinking into something a little bit um, more, a little broader. And by doing that, uh, then then it opens us up to so many more views of things in life, whether they're the things that we consider more positive or the things we think, or we consider more negative. That we can, it helps us to be able to find, you know, what is a, what is a workable solution. So things that bring us to solutions rather than getting stuck on the problem. And this is something yeah. that I think Ayurveda can really, can really help us with, uh, because, you know, the solutions are really not complicated. I know it feels complicated at first for many people. It did for me, but now, you know, we can. We can just start to talk about it more, and that's so. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Mara, thank you so much for sharing your experience and wisdom. I yeah. really, really appreciate it, and yeah. um, I think that we'll we'll finish up our session. Thank okay. you.